Here we are then, at the end of the Abu Dhabi race, the final one of the season. If you haven't seen it, guys, I'll leave it linked up in the top right. And also, if you're new to the channel, over 50% of you guys that watch my content are not subscribed, so consider hitting the red subscribe button, guys. It really helps me out. We might hit 70,000 in the next 48 hours. And then, of course, the road to 100K is well underway. So if you guys want to help me out on that, I'd mass massively appreciate it. But anyway, after... The final race, here we are then. We've been getting our bonuses, cash payouts, and all that good stuff. And we currently sit at three and a half million dollars. Now, Christian Lungard is my teammate currently, but the plan is to not retain him. We're gonna look for a new teammate elsewhere. I've read your comments on the Abu Dhabi episode. I've seen the feedback. So we're gonna try and go for something, let's say, a bit different. I don't have a massive budget. Three and a half mil is gonna be difficult. So. Before we jump into that, we're going to look at the season recap and the final results. You guys love to see this stuff, so let's have a bit of an overview and let's see what happens. So, first and foremost, we got 10 points finishes this season, so exactly 50% of the races that we raced in finished in the points, which is not bad for a brand new team. We've got two podiums, the first one being in Monza, the second one in USA, or sorry, Mexico, and overall, a very strong season. The car was pretty good for the most part. There was a few races where we struggled, like the mid-season there from Austria all the way to Belgium. But then we had a little runs of form, like for example, you know, Zanvoort down to Singapore. So there are definitely highs and lows and, you know, lots of kind of interesting moments throughout the whole season. We started off quite well, you know, two points finishes in our first three races. And in general, the consistent pattern was somewhere between P11 to P9. That was kind of like the average position, I'd say, all season long. So a pretty decent year and we finished top 10 in the Drivers Championship. Now, with our side, we're now gonna move into the contract renewal. Now, what I'm gonna do here, there's a bit of a loophole and a bit of a trick, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into negotiations with Christian Lungan, so we're gonna click A on renegotiate with teammate, but once we get in there, we're actually going to cancel, and essentially that postpones the contract renewal by one day, and that's a little loophole for you guys to kind of, you know, have a bit of a trick with how to do things. And I'm hoping if we can just delay this long enough going into next season, we'll get all of our kind of prize money and I can then buy a new driver at the start of season two. So that's the plan. We're going to keep cancelling and delaying the contract negotiation until next year. So we went into the activities tab. We've done a draft promotion filming. Now we're going to jump into the contract renewal. So as I said, we're going to begin negotiations and then we're going to go to cancel, which will push it back by one day on the timeline you can see it just brings you out on the driver market tab all you've got to do now from here is make your way back to the main menu and as you can see on the left hand side the contract renewal is now scheduled for the 14th so tomorrow in the meantime we have to renegotiate our sponsors and this one being the Zainetto sponsor I'm very happy to continue with them because all we've got to do is answer two interview questions and that gives us a bonus payout so it's pretty easy money so we're going to renegotiate with them and re-sign and we're gonna skip ahead on the simulation and again, do the exact same thing. So contract renewal, we're gonna jump into it. We're then gonna um, go through the process of canceling it like before. And we're gonna delay it by another day. As you can see, we go back to the menu and it's now been postponed to the same day as an interview with Will Buxton. So again, for the third time, we're gonna cancel it and keep pushing this back. And hopefully now we can get to next season and fingers crossed, sign a new driver. But for now, we're going to jump into an interview with Will Buxton and we're going to see what he has to say. Thanks so much for the invitation to your HQ. Let's have a little chat about the team's performance this season. We've been hearing rumours your teammates struggling to cope with the workload at the moment. Is there a worry that this could start to impact their performance? Well, you know, it's a difficult one to say, but I, I do think, you know, um, everyone's working hard right now and Christian is no exception. Sources inside your team have described the environment as a pressure cooker, with growing concerns about how much pressure your staff are under to hit deadlines. Care to comment? Well, I think first and foremost, we want to achieve things in this sport. We're not here to just make up the numbers. So, you know, the team, I have made the team push. We want to push and we want to improve. And that's just part of the challenge. Just picked up the latest issue of MXF magazine and look who's on the cover. What was it like for your teammate working with those folks? I think he really enjoyed it. I think he had a good time doing so. I think exposure is always a good thing in F1, but ultimately we don't want that to take away from the performance side of things. 
Other teams have invested more in their facilities than you have. Are you happy with what you have or is there a cash flow issue? Uh, no, I'm happy with what you have. You know, ultimately we can't just Rome wasn't built in a day, so it takes time to kind of put the foundations in place. But next year, I think you'll see something special from us. We've heard good things about your personnel department here. How important is it to your overall organisation? Well, I think it's key. You know, we want to make sure the drivers are in tip top shape and ready to go. And that's really, really important for us as a team. So we definitely invest in that. Well, it's been wonderful to spend some time with you. Best of luck out on track. And there we go then, job done. We've got one more um, contract renewal window. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and protect the final pending upgrade. So we had one pending on the aerodynamics. Then on the engine, we had, I believe, two more, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to go ahead and protect those as well. And I think, okay, so it's three on the engine, one on the aero. So there we go, job done. And that leaves us now in the bottom right, zero parts at risk on the engine and also on the aerodynamics as well. So... All good to go. We're locked in for season two. We're going to lose none of our performance heading into next year. And unfortunately, we don't have enough points to kind of buy more performance. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. And we're now going to reject Lungard for the final time. Look, boss, we failed to sign a second driver and put ourselves into a difficult situation. Our reserve driver will sit in the car for now, but don't expect much from them. We need to sign a proper second driver in the next window. So there it is, we have not signed a driver. It turns out, and unbeknownst to me, there was actually a contract renegotiation window and that window finishes when the season finishes. So we've actually messed up here and we've missed it quite badly. So essentially what this means is we're gonna have our test slash reserve driver take part in the first part of next season. Now on last year's game, I believe this was a bit of like a, a loophole but you could never actually race with the stead test driver and eventually you would you know sign a second driver teammate but i think from what i can see so far i do believe we're actually locked in and we're going to have to race with our test driver as our teammate so very very interesting i might have messed up here uh, which could be interesting moving forward now a confirmation of fernando alonso he's going to hang up his helmet and retire which was a shame because he was meant to be our original choice for a teammate um, but with that said here we are then end of season one and we've finished all the admin work on this half of the season we're now going to bookend it um you know the curtain call is here let's call it quits and we're going to move into a new season so overall a successful first year i've got to say definitely outperformed expectations to say we're on 110 AR from the get-go but we're now going to move into pastures new and into a brand new Formula One season. So here we are then our first look at our new teammate Aaron Barnes and you can see in the background we've actually gained quite a bit of acclaim during the off-season we're now level 11 and we're also going to rank up as a team to level 14. The only problem here is our teammate who is a level one acclaim and it's not going to be ideal for us. We get some prize money and some sponsorship payout as well. And that's going to take our total up to $23.5 million, which is awesome. And we've got a lot of money to work with. And a quick overview of the championship. Obviously, my teammate didn't take part, but we finished 10th in the championship with 62 points to our name, which is very, very decent. But anyway, let's... Um Let's focus on the new season. So 20 races, I'm going to make one change and we're going to take Russia out of the calendar and we are going to replace it with the Chinese Grand Prix. So in season two, round two will be China and then later on, we won't be going to Sochi. We'll be going from Italy straight to Singapore. So hopefully you guys like that change. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, but a slight modification for season two of the calendar. Now, we're going to move into the customization and this year we're running a brand new helmet you can see i was running the uh, middle far left one before we've now switched to the overrun which is in the item store i've adjusted the colors to what i usually run lewis hamilton inspired of course and also the suits we've gonna we've gone in a different direction we've gone for the band uh suit and we've changed the colors a little bit to black blue and red which i really like and along with that we're going to now jump into activities for the new season so Plenty of days, we've got the car wheel in between. So we're gonna go ahead and do a bit of a claim boosting and cash boosting. So first of all, a pre-season merchandise sale to improve cash flow. And then also we're gonna go for, I believe, an, a pre-season driver press store, I think, to improve my claim. I might be wrong. Um, or it might be a pre-season advertisement. There we go. So that's to improve team acclaim by 500. And activities locked in, we can now move into, let's say, some other activities. and. 
pretty much the main one which we're all here for, the car reveal. So, before we jump into it, I want to mention one thing. Season 2, the car is modded, but very, very slightly. I've not gone overboard. I want to keep the essence of what we had in Season 1 because I've really liked the livery. So, let's jump into it and let's see what the new machine looks like. So there we go then, you guys have just seen the livery and just to kind of compare, let's say, here we have the former season one end of season livery, which of course we changed from race to race, but this was definitely my preferred version with a bit more black uh, running through it. And overall, I wanted to keep the essence the same. I just wanted to clean up the front and rear wings mainly and also the halo a little bit and just in general where the sponsors tend to go. And you can see here, here is a new version. First and foremost, a nice matte finish i might refine it a little bit for the first race i might just tweak it subtly but generally this is what we're going to run with and not a massive overhaul just running what i think looks the best and i am going to try and keep the concept running of changing colors you know from race to race to keep the car looking unique in some way so hope you guys enjoy that and here are some screenshots i've taken in game of the new car from the front of course we've still got those kind of different color variations i've just put a bit of black there to kind of break up the livery a bit and you know the honda engine sticker as well which for me is really really important little details like that go a long way the honda on the rear wing like red bull like alpha tauri as well and uh, just in general cleaning it up a little bit and making the sponsors work a bit better and then adding the wee races one and just a few little details like that but in general i think a very very nice looking car for season two if you guys like it then leave a like on the video let me know in the comments down below what you think you can see here as we pick up the activities tab and the messages i think we've bunked out the game a little bit because i've got a spam of emails regarding the reserve driver so um i definitely think by trying to delay the contract and signing a new driver with the cash money i may have broken the game a little bit um but yeah here she is in the flesh sitting beautifully in the new office i've removed a bit of the red i've brought in a bit more blue as the team colors and i think now i'm really happy with what we have so essentially only the livery has changed the helmets the suits the gloves the boots all that stuff is still in-game based and uh, yeah here you can see my new teammate so aaron barnes level one 25 rating across the board the only good thing is that his focus is 80 which is pretty really really good so yeah besides that I'm really curious to see what happens. It looks like we're locked in. I can't actually sign a driver, so not even a free agent, which logically you should be able to do. So we're gonna run with Aaron Barnes and see what happens. We're gonna go ahead and spend that cash um, prize money on some facility upgrades. We're gonna increase the fabrication to level two. That way we can push on with upgrades and really improve the car. Along with that, we're gonna now run you through the grid for this year. So pretty much with Alonso's retirement, there hasn't been a lot of changes. The draft market hasn't been too crazy. The big change is George Russell. He has stepped up to Alpine. He's replacing Alonso, which means there's going to be a vacant seat in the Williams team, along with our team as well, of course, because Lungard left. And, you know, what's going to happen with Christian Lungard? So all the other teams are pretty much unchanged. No changes of, you know, of, of any decent caliber besides Russell to Alpine. And then Williams... They've kept Nicholas Latifi, of course, and taking George Russell C is going to be none other than our former teammate, Christian Lungard. Um, you'll get confirmation now on screen, but yeah, very surprising, but also unsurprising, which I'm looking forward to. I'm glad Christian is still on the grid. You can see here, 48 focus. He's feeling pretty down right now, I believe, after being dumped. And we'll see how he gets some alongside Latifi in that new pairing in the Williams team. But George Russell in the Alpine is a very spicy one, which I'm very much looking forward to. But anyway, there we go. Admin work finished. We are ready for the new race and, you know, the new season, the new car, new drivers, everything. Season two is about to begin. But first of all, let's jump into a bit of a recap and, uh, you know, a rendezvous with our engineer, of course. And we're going to see what happened during the off season. All right. Welcome to the new season. I think we've done a pretty good job protecting our development gains through the regs change, so the car should be pretty decent. But get out there and let us know how it feels. So here we are having a look at the changes during the off season. We've actually moved up to midfield. We are the sixth quickest team. We've taken a step forward and that is purely based off just protecting the upgrades that we had. So 
looking decent we have still taken a bit of a step down the reason for that i believe is due to engine upgrades from honda which have uh, taken a step back um, but still we've moved forward and made some progress during the off season you can see right now in terms of the general overview of how things look we're solid mid table that's exactly where we are and looking at this i think we have to work on the engine a little bit this season that's kind of the area the aero the chassis and the durability are pretty well rounded i don't think they're going to be of any major concern i think we need to just tweak and just edge the power unit forward a little bit this season so that's going to be the concern and the focus early on but anyway that is it guys i think we're done we're locked in we're ready to go and all the updates are in place so the next episode will be round one of bahrain we'll jump straight into the action in the next episode if you guys are excited for that leave a like let's try and smash over 1200 likes on this episode subscribe for more as i mentioned in the intro and uh, notifications on to not miss when that first episode does go live so yeah that's it from me here today guys thank you for watching as always check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them and i'll see you guys in the next one until then take care and it's goodbye from me